Tony Good Schaefer, job. thank you very, very much. Uh, all right, I, I do know Rand Paul is a senator. I do know he's a doctor. I don't know if he's a lawyer. That could be problematic, but we'll see. The Kentucky Republican, former presidential candidate, Senator Rand Paul with us. Good to have you, sir. Thanks, Neil. Are you a lawyer? Uh, thankfully, no. Okay, good. So we can proceed in English. All right, now, uh, I do want to get into the health care stuff with you and so much more that's going on. This obviously a huge disruption. It was huge enough for the market to be disrupted. Uh, so obviously it's a big deal when guys betting money all of a sudden get worried. Uh, having said that, what do you think of the actions that the Attorney General took to recuse himself and he says move on? Well, you know, I think we need to get beyond this and really start getting to some of the things that need to be fixed in the country. The biggest debate in the capital and in the country right now is what to do with health care. And so I think we need to really hone in on that. And I think that uh, hopefully the press conference by the attorney general will help us get uh, get on to business. I don't know about that, though. You're closer than I am, sir. But I, I'm getting a sense, especially when the top Democratic leaders are saying, not good enough, the guy has to go, and others have been arguing that, uh, you know, this whole thing might warrant a special prosecutor. Is this just spiraling you know, out of control? If we're, if we're going to have everybody go that makes a misstatement on whether they met an ambassador or not, uh, we're going to have some people going. I mean, we had one senator already on the other side of the aisle says she never met with a Russian ambassador until someone looked at her Twitter and found out, sure, she met with the Russian ambassador. She just forgot. So, I mean, I think we ought to take a step back here and be a little bit uh, uh, more rational about whether or not it's uh, appropriate or inappropriate for senators to meet with a U.S. ambassador. All right. I think you're talking about Senator McCaskey. But let me uh, move on to this health care thing, because yesterday when I attempted to talk to the Treasury Secretary, uh, he was very optimistic, Senator, that this timeline to get tax cuts uh, done, approved, voted on, signed, sealed, and delivered by August was still good. Uh, and I asked him about what was going on with the you know, repeal and replace movement, Obamacare, he said, oh, it would be, it would be resolved by then. Uh, there's no need to play that, uh, anything back from that, just to, to get to you on, on whether that's in danger, because I was telling him then, as I'll tell you now, and you probably know far better than I now, that does not look like a smooth sailing thing. Well, it sort of depends. I think there are things we agree on, and there is an easy way to repeal it. Vote on what we voted on a year ago. And I'm not sure why more people aren't saying this, but we voted a year ago and every Republican in the Senate, save one, and every Republican in the House voted to repeal the whole thing, or as much as we thought we could repeal under the rules. Why not just put forward what we voted on? I think they've made it more complicated than it has to be. But if you add in things that conservatives don't like, if you add an individual mandate back in, which their plan has, you add in a Cadillac tax, which their plan has, and you add in a new entitlement program, that's not conservative, so you won't get conservative votes. And they need our votes, so they need to not be dismissive. They need to not hide their bill somewhere in the basement of the Capitol. They need to let us see it. Where did they meet? Where this was out. this meeting going on? Because apparently <laughs> you were not invited. But where yeah. was this meeting where they're cooking this up or crafting this? Well, we actually weren't looking for a meeting. We were looking for the bill. And I promise you the bill does exist. It's written in legislative language. It's been previewed by the CBO, but it's not been seen by any senators that I know of. So right, we so should be should, allowed so to see You the know bill. this process, Senator. The way it works is they cook this up, whatever. Then they want a simple up or down vote in the Senate on what they've produced, right? They want to take it or leave it approach. I'm not really for that because they're going to say, hey, here it comes from the House, take it or leave it. And I don't think that's the way we ought to do this. We've had six years to complain, kibitz, and sort of give our opinions on Obamacare. There ought to be a legislative process where everyone's involved, not just sort of behind closed doors with a secret bill that no one's no, allowed I to read. No, I understand that, but forward. what it risks, what it risks, and what worries, I guess, the, the some is that I know you feel this way, Ted Cruz feels this way, Mike Lee of Utah feels this way. That would ensure its defeat in the Senate, right? So then the fear is that Republicans, an, are, but, they're falling apart. But there's another way to look at this, Neil. Put forward the bill we already voted on and you'll get unanimous support. You'll be done with it. You can move on to tax reform. But wait it's a minute, very, the, bill very that you voted, uh, the bill you voted is a simple repeal. 
Yeah, simple repeal. And then put forward replacement at the same time, but as a separate bill. See, that's what I've been arguing for. I'd even let the Democrats put forward a replacement, too. I'd give them a vote. I'd give a conservatives a vote on replacement. But not I'd everyone give, agrees on the replacement, right? So you're back to well, square one. Well, that's what would happen. You'd figure that out through voting. So the big government people, Republicans and Democrats, they want a new entitlement program. They want Medicaid expansion. And they want uh, somehow to, you know, have federal money pay for all of this. Let's vote on that as a separate bill from repeal. This is falling repeal. apart, isn't it? This whole thing. <laughs> it's fall, it seems no, to me to be falling no, apart. No, 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 no. Neil, it's simple. You vote on complete repeal separate. They don't want to do that. These guys well, don't want to do that. I know they don't do want that. to do it, but if they want conservatives to vote for the repeal, they're going to have to give us complete repeal separate from all the new government programs they want. All right, so if assuming they, can, they don't if, do that, Senator, then this, the tax cut thing is delayed, if not off, right? Well, no, what happens is there's a jockeying going back and forth, right. and they will have to see if they can convince conservatives to vote for their plan. But I can tell you right now, it will not pass with a new entitlement program, All right. with a Cadillac tax, and they keep the individual mandate. These are the things we've been campaigning against for years now. All they right. can't keep Obamacare light and expect conservatives to vote for it. All right, Senator, thank you very, very much. Thank you. We shall see.